Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Medieval 2 Total War, where, yeah, we're at war with everyone. We're just, you know, it's got war in the title, you can't be too surprised, but yeah, we've been seeing we've got more wars on than, uh, than I anticipated. Someone did put out in the comments they thought I was potentially currently at war with more people than I wasn't at war with. Not quite true. <laughs> I actually went and counted, but almost true. Almost true indeed. I think right now we're at war with... We're at war with eight factions and not at war with nine. So that's fine. I think that was how the count went. But admittedly, if the Mongols attack us, that will actually change. <laughs> that will change. And that does count the rebels as a faction, which they probably shouldn't be counted as. So whether you consider that true or not, I don't know. But anyway, we've got things to do today. We've got this massive, great army here outside of Iron Einstein. And yeah, we finally got some blisterants in a ship nearby. Need to figure out what to do with these guys right now. There's all sorts of interesting options. Like, if this turn, this army moves away, moves north, London could be one hell of a prize. Because it seems like London is, uh, yeah, guarded overwhelmingly by flipping siege equipment, which should not be too hard to take out. Because, yeah, if you look at how full the banner is versus the fact they've got uh, 17 units present. Oh, wait, sorry, is the count system the same? No, sorry, it's just like Rome. It's nine, not ten in a row, so uh, they don't actually have that many units present. But still, I think, yeah, given the positioning of that blister and these catapults, they're just building non-stop catapults here. We should be able to move straight into London and take it over. That's definitely an option if this Big army God. were to move you away. That would be possible. Me. Or we could kick them off the actual uh, continent here by kicking them out of their fortress. That would definitely be true as well. But first... First, we've got something more important to do. The French are trying to reinforce. They've seen my cunning plan, yes. but it's too late, lads. In we go. Toulouse is going to be mine. The spies have opened the gates, and that means I get myself, without too much difficulty, a fortress down on the southern frontier, and also kind of guarding the entrance, the Pyrenees. This really cuts France off from its southern colonies, which is marvellously good news. Let's do this, shall we? Yeah, exactly what I expect to just a family member and some dismantled feudal knights. I've got plenty of armor-piercing stuff. We should be fine. Ah, okay. So we're looking at a layout exactly the same as what we saw in the defense of Bruges, except this time we're doing the attacking from the exact same angle, in fact. So that is... Yeah, that should be doable. All the gates should all be nice and open the moment the fight begins. Uh, this should not be a big deal, to be honest. And always nice to see the Norse war clerics get a ride out. They've got these lovely helmets, by the way. They've got little crosses on their helmets and all kind of gold face plates. They're very, very cool indeed. Right, start the battle. Yes, indeed, the gates belong to us. Lovely. Now, what have we got here? They were on the walls, but then immediately abandoned said walls because they know the gates don't belong to them. Understandable. So, therefore, what are they going to do? Are they Are going to fall back to the plaza or are they going to drop defensively? right here in front of the gate. Let's just let them do that and see what they do. Okay, they've decided to drop defensively on the gate. Well, that's fine because even though they're right there, I would say my little catapult should be able to do some marvellously good work here. Right, let's just quickly take down those gates, get them out of the way here. Literally, it's 20 damage per shot, so they'll go down any second now. There they go, lovely. Now with them out of the way, yes, as I suspected, with the gates gone, they've decided to fall back entirely. Because at that point, I would have just been able to start shooting them with my catapult. Everyone falls back to the inner level. Right, time to bring everything into the city. May as well bring the war clerics in too. Just drop a new position here, basically do the same thing again. Oh, we've got some movement in there though. What are you guys doing? Dismount feudal knights. Ah, once again taking up a position too. Ah, they're moving up onto the walls. Okay. That's fine. What we can simply do is, uh, yeah, batter down the gates. You guys are more or less into position. Lovely. Take down the gates, and then we can simply take down the towers. Second set of gates goes down. Lovely. And an extra rock goes through. Possibly takes out a horse. Who knows if we're lucky. And they have once again abandoned those walls. They hate holding the walls when, yeah, they've actually got uh, no gate to protect. So, my plan probably shouldn't surprise you. I'm basically going to do the Milan to them again. The old Milan shuffle. My troops drop here. Crossbows. Take the opportunity behind my troops to get up on the walls. Then we just shoot everyone like that. Speaking of which, all you guys need to have skirmish mode off in case that causes trouble. But yeah, should be fine to basically just move in at this point. Right, that should do nicely. 
Get those guys moving in. Slow things down a little bit. Make sure they head in first. Okay, they're way ahead. In which case, my crossbows just start moving up towards here. And to here. And to here. Everyone starts moving in. Lovely. Uh, you guys out of this mode for the time being. And now, everyone do this in a hurry, please. Lovely. Right, in come my troops. Question is, will they respond when we actually pass through the gate? If we're lucky, no. But honestly, we can beat them in a straight slugging match, so it's fine in either case. No sign of movement yet. I think we're far enough back from them. Everyone's just idle. Good. Good, good, good. If we do have the opportunity to just get our crossbow guys up to the top, that's okay. Let's just get these guys off fire at will for now. I want them to start firing together when they're ready to go. Lovely. All the troops pour forward. Everyone's in good shape. Right, these guys go into position. They go into their little spiky wall and guard mode. You guys as well in a second. These guys are just drawing up, waiting to be in a position to run up. There they go. Lovely. They start running up. Momentarily, these guys will hopefully start running up as well. Anytime you're there, they go. Lovely. Good. Everyone's moving into position. Everything looks good. You also spear wall. Guard position, lovely. If anything charges these guys, they're going to take a hell of a lot of damage and we'll be able to flank with our own infantry. This is perfect. Okay, repositioned everyone so they can all fit on the walls, in which case everyone is in range of the dismounted feudal knights. Three units of crossbows, armor piercing with the high ground. Open fire, lads. Oh, this is going to be lovely. This is just going to be lovely. Let's just get the, uh, the knight's eye view of this. Well, rather the side on view. Let's just let this frontline flipping collapse. And in comes the first volley, and oh, oh yes indeed, they've already lost flipping 20% of their strength. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Now where are they charging in? They're charging in, ah, they're charging over to these guys. That's interesting. That's not necessarily the best position, to be honest, but that's fine. Get the Viking Raiders round the side. Get you round to this sort of a position. That's okay. If they're kind of willing to charge off the plaza, we might be able to get round the back of them, potentially. The horses are pulling. Do they want to be involved or not? They're not quite sure. We're on the plaza, technically. We actually hold the plaza at the minute. And the flipping dismounted feudal knights have already broken. Get all of my guys, who I've actually taken a bit of a knock. I assume they've activated that. So, get on the general's bodyguard. Get on the back of them, please. You just start moving in this sort of direction. And we've technically won. Good enough. This is a nice, simple battle. I'll take that. 20 men lost to take a fortress. Lovely. Now, interesting. Because the population to be massacred is over 10,000, that means to lose, therefore, must have a population of about... 11, 12,000 or thereabouts. So I could turn it into a citadel immediately. But honestly, I don't think I need to turn it into a citadel. I'd rather have the 10,000 florins and it should still be, it's still big enough to be a citadel. Marvellous, I made the right choice then. Apparently they never bothered building advanced mines. In all fairness, these aren't great mines anyway, so that's fine. Right, so if I wanted to, I could get this place right up to a citadel with the money I just looted from it. But honestly, we don't need a citadel in Toulouse. That's not urgent. But that money will be very useful elsewhere because Genoa can finally have its huge stone wall that's been wanting for some time. Marvellous. Now, who else needs urgent stuff here? Gaza. Ah, Gaza. Get yourself some ballista towers. Just in case the Mongols make it this far south, ballista towers will make that a much tougher proposition. Ah, you need to go over to Gaza. That's where you're going. And Acre can't have those just yet, but as soon as they get to Citadel, they will be able to. That's fine. Interestingly, the Russians do seem to be partly remobilizing, potentially. That could be How may I concern. Let me move you down here, given there's a of Russian priest there as well. That guy, I think, is on the move. To you, just going to get a few extra troops in lasagna, just in case. Just, yeah. One extra Norse archer, some actual proper heavy infantry. That should be enough to hold. Is London second day? It's a castle, not a fortress. That should still be enough, just in case they get stupid ideas. Polish continue to do nothing of note. Beautiful. They're just kind of, yeah, trying to hold their capital. That's fine. Slowly but surely, we'll pick them off. Ooh, you know what? Mets could have a practice range. That's a good use of money. Norse archers are great units and just kind of remain so throughout the game. Iron Einstein. Um... They can have garrison quarters. They can already train some pretty damn solid infantry. I think we're okay on the infantry front for the time being. Better have them 
Actually, you know what? No. I'm going to give Metz. Metz can have the garrison quarters. And Iron Einstein can have the... I could do with the roads. No, uh, no practice range. Practice range is the important thing. Let's get these guys retrained as well. And just a handful more scouts. Actually, we've got plenty of scouts there. That's fine. Maybe just a uh, handful more Viking Raiders. Proper heavy infantry. Well, not proper heavy infantry, but it'll do the job. For like some of the earliest units you get in the game, Viking Raiders continue really being able to do their job surprisingly long amounts of time. Like, you know, they're cheap. They're quick to train. There's loads of them. And attack nine, defense nine with effective against armor. They'll do the job. They're capable support units. As for my assassin, there's not really much point in uh, Constanza of Spain dying, the but uh, unfortunately she's like nice and easy to assassinate, and uh, when he kills someone, he might actually, you know, get lucky enough to pick up a new bit of equipment. So, uh, go on. She's going to die. Are we doing the old snake in the bed trick? Yeah, it's the old snake in the bed trick. This should work. Yes, indeed it does. Uh, and trait increase. No. Basically, I'm just making King Charles the Crusader worse and worse and worse because I'm cancelling out all his um, chivalry bonuses guy, yeah. from doing the campaign by just making That's him constantly wish. order murders that there's literally no reason to order. Whatever, right? Right. To lose, can we retrain anything? Uh, you can retrain something. Is that because you've got a... Ooh, armourer. Very nice. Okay, a proper armourer there and everything. Go on then, sure. Just kind of put some new armour on these guys. Now, we could admittedly do with some more generals this side of the Empire, because, yeah, right now we're lacking generals. Frederick the Crusader probably needs to stay here, just in the off chance, you know, Venice ever do something stupid, or the Imperials. Like, we've got two big armies in this part of the world. We need a general here. This guy needs to be heading north, but I wouldn't mind a general to mind to lose. Unfortunately, they're all kind of stuck in the Middle East right now, but in all fairness, the Mongols are coming, so honestly, that's not the worst thing in the world. Right, I think that's all we can do this turn. Next turn's the big one. We need to figure out what we're doing with our new guy over here and where exactly he's going to go next. That partly depends on what England does now. Let's wrap this up. So, France, whole bunch of assassins and diplomats as usual. Fine, France just loves its agents. Oh, they're going to know. I thought they might be suing for peace there. Just in case they got, you know, got a bit bored losing cities to me or so. Well, when I say losing cities, they've lost two. They've lost Marseille and now Toulouse. But, uh, yeah, they're not looking as strong as they once did, to be honest. More assassins need to watch out for them. Especially also their spies even more so. That's just a ship not doing anything. A few troops pottering around, but now no. Now it's too late. Now they're falling back as... Oh! Unless, do you want to do this? No. No, you don't. You just want to stand vaguely nearby and make kind of threatening noises. Metz, I might need to be careful of. If that big army moves north and heads over to Metz, we might struggle to hold at Metz, given Metz is... Uh, I think Metz is only a castle, right? Yeah, I think Metz is only a castle. Imperial's still got some troops around Nuremberg, but honestly, the Hungarians have been doing... Uh, I'm not sure what the Hungarians have been doing. Possibly they want war with Vienna, which would be very sad, but we'll see about that. We'll see if we get any better indication what's going on. As long as they don't attack me, because they've got a single unit of crossbowmen just in my territory, and I'm not quite sure why, but I don't like it. Nope, thankfully, the Venetians have decided to fall back to guard their own city. Good, good, good. And unfortunately, sorry, we're kind of blockading this bridge, so you can't cross it. That's a shame. Scottish bumbling around, just presumably sending some troops over to Dublin, I guess. Scottish don't really have much to do, to be honest. They're having a very quiet game, but it is nice they have at least managed to get something. Bison signs chatting with the Turks. And also to me, they were begging me for an alliance a while ago. No, not anymore, though. Oh, hang on. Did I just see the flipping Byzantines put a Turkish city under siege? I think that's the Turkish capital under siege. Oh, Byzantines, that's cruel of you. The Turks are not having a good day. Have you heard about this Mongol horde thing? It's not great. Oh, that is indeed a Russian army back inside our territory. They're heading for Moscow. Fine. Retrain a new army at Lasagna II and just get it basically hovering over in the north. We can beat them back on the walls of Moscow. That's fine as long as we've got a proper army there to deal with it. And the Turks come straight out and Sally, and almost certainly that's a much bigger one. I don't know what the Byzantines were even thinking there. That was, yeah, that was an odd fight for them to even pick. The English diplomats continue bumbling around here, but after their chat with Russia, yeah, this is the interesting one. Where are the English army's going to move? Because where they place their armies this turn makes a big difference with what I'm going to do. Please head north. Just walk north, okay? Force heading over here. Force heading north, get pulled north, get pulled north. Reinforcements go inside their fortress. 
the English Navy rushes down south. I think they know what might be coming, but I think they're leaving London pretty well guarded. Yeah, and York's pretty well guarded. Nottingham's not, though. But if I was just to try and go and take Nottingham, that would put me in a really risky situation because I'm surrounded by multiple decent strength armies. But I could just try and cut them down when they come to take back their own castle. Could work. Mm, worth a thought. And their turn's over. Fine. So I think they've realised what's going on. The air has done a good job figuring out that I'm coming. Because, yeah, now they've all of a sudden got... Uh, they've kind of drawn up defensively around all their territories. That are close by to the army, at least. And small force leaves Poland just to go and reinforce another city. Nothing major. The main force stays at their capital to be expected, really. Now Hungary. Don't do... Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I want to see. Hungarian forces heading into Imperial Territory. Yes, that's right. Oh, you wonderful, wonderful bastards. Keep it up. Oh, and if we're lucky, the... No, an Inquisitor trying to take out a French general, but failed. That man must have been truly, truly pious. Oh, gosh darn it. Okay, it looks like they are, in fact, heading for... Yeah, they're heading south in the end. Fine. It looked like they I were potentially no going one. to just kind of head round to... Uh, the west, but now, well, some of them are like heading south. Well, that's to be expected. Okay, fine. Looks like they are coming for us after all. The Mongols are potentially coming our way. Now, the woman who needs herself a husband. What have we got here? Eager is good. Marks of war is good. Skilled bureaucrats, great. Yep, welcome aboard. You're Grim. Grim Sorensen. Okay, fine. Good old Grim Sorensen, who is over in Thorn, together with literally everyone else. And also... Uh, Bunch of traits have just shown up. Feels unappreciated. Uh, Einstein Sten Kilson. Feels unappreciated. Feels unappreciated. Is that because you're... No, you're not there. I'm not sure why they suddenly started feeling unappreciated. Like, it would have been quite funny if, like, you know, a third guy showed up in the castle. So, therefore, the other people in the castle felt unappreciated. Because why well, I've got three people in one place. But no. That hasn't happened, which is kind of... Kind of odd. Right, good old Magnus, who's not going to be around for too much longer, to be honest. Uh, you, my good man, you've just... Oh, have you just come of age, literally, just by coincidence? Or were you last... I think you were last turn. King Charles Crusader gets a Master Archer. Very, very nice indeed. Other than that... Ooh! An Einstein Sten Kilson. Oh, yeah, he's over in Kiev, isn't he? Yeah, he's got some really good stuff with him. Intrepid Explorer is a great little thing to have. Is that because there's a... Explorer's Guild. Yeah, Explorer's Guild here. That's kind of the one good thing about the Explorer's Guild. The Intrepid Explorer is a good thing to have. Plus 15% movement points is damn good. Though admittedly, he's got too comfortable, so he gets minus 10% movement points, so it's kind of wasted on him, to be honest. We've had a storm. Hang on, see where the storm is. I'm not sure how that affects me, to be honest. It's just raining in the UK. That's pretty common, really. We are the most advanced faction, and the Moors hate us. In all fairness, the Moors already hated us. It's fine. Okay. The situation of the English fortress. Two family members, some good heavy infantry. Other than that, a little bit scrappy and thrown together. The situation in London. Let's get my spy down here to have a little loopsy. Get a closer look at that situation here. London is... Oh! Okay. Nowhere near as much siege equipment as I thought, but... Arch militia and spear militia, albeit uh, well-armoured lads. Five to ten. Okay, and a large stone wall. I Backed up with... Ah! Enemy. Okay, fine. I think a large amount of the uh, flipping catapults just left to go over there. I think we could do it, you know. I think we could actually pull that off. Because we've got ourselves here. I'm we've got a proper serve, army. Proper army with proper troops. All we need to do, really, is at the beginning of the fight, just head straight over... And it's take out the reinforcements. The, the reinforcements are going to be incredibly slow moving anyway because of, yeah, the catapults. Also, Humphrey Taylor. I saw that said Humphrey the Taylor there for a second. I've never seen that epithet before. He must really, really enjoy clothes. But no, no, that's not what's going on at all. Yeah, you know what? I think this, this makes sense right here. I mean, I think this is going to be easier to crack than their fortresses. And the amount of money we're going to make off it is going to be ridiculous when we sack the place. Population 22,000. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a lot of money. Anything else we need to know here? Yeah, we know about the marriage. Recruitment, construction. Some people like to see the end of turn report. There it flipping is. Uh, we're looking very, very good indeed. But yeah, financially, the Mongols are technically ahead of us. Because the Mongols are just tearing up stuff and sacking everything. You know what? I think it's time for history to repeat itself. 
Vikings getting in a flipping longboat and heading over to the UK to basically smash the hell out of some English cities. Some things never bloody change. The problem is we now need to go around the outside of this Portuguese fleet. If I disembark right here, given how far the ship can move, I should have enough movement points left to move my army two spaces, one to move to here, and then kind of an unofficial second to actually begin the siege. Right. Around the outside. Hello, England! I'm the Vikings. You may be roughly aware of what happens next. In we go to London. They're under siege. Begin the assault. Oh, yes. Oh, this is going to be good. Right, so... Those guys are just... Yeah, that's just a captain. We got ourselves... It's mostly light stuff we'll be able to chop our way through very easily. Like, defensively, it's alright because they've got it well armoured. But it's just like, you know, attack of 5 plus. A large part of the defence skill is armour. And I've got lots of armour piercing, so that should be absolutely fine. Uh, catapults are nothing. One unit of heavy stuff. Billmen are kind of fun. I love Billmen. Billmen are great. They're kind of like slightly more professionalised version of like the um, the woodsman. The rush you get. Which is why England's got such hilarious infantry. But yeah, just effective against armour. Really, really, really high attack. But really weak defensively. It's a fascinating unit to use tactically. It's really great fun. Right. Get rid of you. And then Humphrey Taylor coming in with basically really, really defensively flimsy units. And a ton of siege equipment. And he is... Oh, he's just a young kid. He could grow up to be decent, and we can't knight fight to get around this because he's got a knight fighter as well. Fine, so even if I were to attempt to knight... Oh, apparently I can't do knight attack, so that's absolutely fine anyway. All right, let's do this. Time for revenge against England. There she is, London, my old home, and yeah, you've got to say it's... It's smaller than I remember. <laughs> I get the feeling this game significantly scales down how big the city actually ought to be. So, what we know is we're over here. Now, the reinforcements for the English are going to be coming from this direction. They should be allowed to spawn in. There shouldn't be that many. Actually, no, sorry. I've actually changed the game files. I'd forgotten about that. I've changed the game files so they're guaranteed to spawn in. So I probably want to start over here so I can basically run over and intercept the reinforcing army immediately. After that, yeah, this will be as good a place as any to approach through, quite frankly. Then we've got ourselves... Actually, yeah, this would be a good angle to approach from anyway, because then I'll have a nice long kind of shot with my indirect fire into this area. Yeah, that's going to be fine. So, standing over here, we're going to have two units that are actually going to guard the blister to make sure they stay safe. Because whatever the English send out, two units of Norse swordsmen should be able to take care of it. And if it looks dicey, I can bring the cavalry back to reinforce. Everyone else, however, is going to be drawn up facing this way to go and deal with that corner. Now, arguably, I don't quite want to send everyone because they'll get tired, and I don't want them tired for the main fight in the city. But I could send my cavalry up ahead just to potentially skirmish with them. They'll do a good job against the catapults, the bare minimum. Meanwhile, yeah, my infantry can just slightly more slowly catch up with the infantry. Right, start the battle. Let's see what's going on. Okay, the guys are indeed arriving straight away from exactly the corner I expected. Question now is where they're going to logically head, because they've got... There's a gate there, and there's a gate there. That one feels slightly close to me, so they're probably going to make a run for that. So in which case, I'm going to have my guys immediately basically just start running in... That will be enough. I don't need all of it. Let's just go for just these guys. Just these guys. Let's just send these guys in this sort of a direction. I mean, my normal horse, including my general, just going to start heading pretty much straight at them. Just straight flipping at them. Beautiful. Because, yeah, these catapults are going to be very, very slow. And it's going to take these guys a little bit of time just to get into the battlefield. Because, yeah, they only walk until they actually get in the battlefield. They're not allowed to actually run into the field. And they generally don't go anywhere too fast until, like, the whole army's made it through. So these guys are... What are you going to do? The moment these guys enter the battlefield, they could theoretically start running. Then we'll get an idea what they want to do. Yeah. Okay. They have changed formation. And it looks like they're heading for... Yeah. Then for that gate over there. Fine. We've got the feeling pretty much no. Okay. I think they're waiting for some of the rest of it. The dangerous bit is they've got a... No. Hello. Okay. Have they decided they want to actually head over to face us directly? Okay. This is intriguing. Just redirect these forces over here. Just in case. Yeah. They're drawing up defensively. 
Okay. Well, I tell you what. The scouts can't do a good job, but everything else... Uh, you know what? A frontal charge into spearmen. Not the most sensible idea. Back off for a second. The problem is, they've got the catapults. I need to be able to charge... Okay, I'm going to get my horses around the side. They do appear to be wanting to head straight at me. Fine, if they want an actual straight slugging match, I'm going to have some reinforcements coming in at the same time. You guys, start moving in too. These guys up to here. These guys just keep moving over here. My horses just move around the outside. The catapults are... If they have to keep turning to face us, they can't really shoot. So that's fine. I can get around the side of them. Yeah, there we are. They're vaguely... They were trying to take a shot at my cavalry there. But they can't just yet because they're not just like fired or anything. They need to actually have like a still target. Otherwise, they have to reposition because they lose their tracking. Okay. So we've got all our cavalry now around the side of them. They've managed to... Wait, hang on. What? Okay. These guys really, really want the artillery to be right over there, as it turns out. Then, wow, okay. <laughs> Excellent. They just managed to get that there very, very quickly indeed. Right, guys, just get right up close to them. And if the infantry tries to move forward to cover, that means I can just bring my cavalry in. So they're going to get a couple of shots in. Yep, looks like it. So in which case, right up the back, please. Lovely. They're going to take a little bit of damage here. But this is fine. I think we've taken, yeah, we've taken some light knocks there. But it's absolutely fine. In comes the cavalry in a moment. These guys are just going there. Excuse me. No, keep keep getting in, please. Keep getting in. And now they're panicking. Now I don't know what to do. In comes some scouts into the back of these guys. The general's bodyguard will probably panic in a second. But if he gets committed in the front line, that's fine. I've got some spearmen with me. These guys are going to break immediately. Okay, let's just get some of you guys back over here. I don't want my cavalry drawn into a fight with the general's bodyguard because there's too many scouts in there. So let's just quickly get these guys over here. And now get into the back of these guys. These guys are already shaken. Let's see if we can just trigger the mass route nice and early. At this point, these guys aren't going to do much. They are shaken. They're surrounded. They're wavering. Come on, break. You just tell militia. You shouldn't be able to stand up too much. General's bodyguard stuck at the back, not doing anything. These guys are now heading in nicely. Get over here. Fine. We got ourselves our first break there. Swing straight through them next to this guy. And these guys are okay. Broken fine to the death. Broken and routing. Now just over to this guy. And we've also got, yeah, the reinforcements coming in this side. Just to get around the side of there. Bill Militia are relatively tough. Actually, it would be nice to get a charge on them. It would be nice to have a charge in there. Right. Let's get the scouts out of there. Scouts. Oh, someone's still flipping firing. You go chase down those guys. There's no point in you really being here, to be perfectly honest. And you, get out the back and help round this side. These guys are already shaken. Just get round the back, round the side, round the side, round the side, round the side. Yeah, you guys are getting after these guys. You guys heading over there. The oh, look at that. Look at that. That's what a flipping flaming um, blister does. Flaming blister shots are ludicrous if you get a good hit. Right, they're breaking. They're breaking through here. Everyone up to the back, and at this point, everyone just basically swing through them. The scouts can handle the reinforcements. Everyone else needs to go after the general. He's already wavering as well. The enemy general is also fleeing. That's absolutely fine. Okay, I want my scouts to take care of him. One unit of scouts. Another unit of scouts needs to head over here and take these guys. But at this point, yeah, that should be fine. And if we're lucky, we can now ride down their leader with my scouts. But the reinforcing army has been pretty cleaned up. And uh, yeah, so we've lost 8% of our strength. Fine, we've lost some infantry. But we've taken out a third of them and we're going to ride down more yet. This is all fine for the time being. Right, you are... You're supposed to be chasing down the king. Get on it. Not king, but, you know, prince or whatever. I know I made that mistake a lot. Hang on, is that the king right there? No, sadly, that's not the king. Ah, we're going to be a little bit late. My scouts are just going to be a little bit late here. The king is tragically going to make his way in because... Ah, if I'd thought about it, I could have actually moved my... Uh, I could have actually moved my guys up ready specifically to uh, take out the king and intercept him with crossbows. But that's fine. The king is going to make it into the plaza. He's only got 15 left at this point and he's going to be a bit tired because that sort of strength comes back very, very slowly indeed. At this point, it's going to be... Well, it looks like it's just going to be a very slow slugging match on the plaza. But simply, I've got the superior infantry. So if it comes to that, it comes to it and we will win regardless. 
Right, nice first move. Let's get our own ballista up front. Just need to knock down the door. Okay, I'm seeing some movement in the town. I think they're bringing up some troops to the walls. That's fine. If they want to do that, that's okay. Just keep my own troops away. Is everyone over there dead at this point? Technically, no. There's still... There's one fleeing guy. Does... Does someone want to get this guy? Does anyone want to, like, go and just, like, get this guy who's just kind of stuck? Can anyone actually get to him? Anyone get to him? Give him a... Yep, someone gave him a whack. Good. Right. Everyone else, start just walking back in this direction, please. Thank you. And there we are. Ballista moves into range. You're also just riding over there for some reason. Not sure why, you just are. And the English are, yeah, they're not sure whether to do it or not. They vaguely want to hold the walls, but they also kind of don't dare. Well, there's no one in range of the towers. It feels less important to them by the looks of things. So, uh, they might be bringing up some town militia, but other than that, nothing major at all. In all fairness, reinforced gates in the city are not going to stand up to even a basic ballista for long. Now, perfect scenario is basically we can once again do the Milan and Toulouse shuffle. Which is when the gates go down, they'll all run to try and reinforce the gates. When that happens, I get my troops in faster and as a result can get my archers up on their walls. So, just in case we can do that, uh, archer lads, prepare to move in. As soon as we can. We've got cavalry ready to move in. We've got Norse swordsman ready to hold up. Yeah, Norse swordsman will hold the line very, very nicely indeed. And everyone else is in the process of coming back. I'm just having them out to walk at the minute because they are already up to... Well, the scouts are tired. Everything else should hopefully be okay. And I don't actually have visibility of how strong the gates are, but they're looking pretty bloody battered to me. A few more shots should do it. We've easily got the ammo for that. But if I can, I'm going to move these Norse swordsmen a bit close forward just so I can actually see how damaged these gates are. It's too close enough, you can't see that. So, just bring these guys a little bit further up. Like, if you're in range of a blister, you should be almost there, to be honest. So, come on. Gates, just a tiny bit further, but not into range of the towers. Just get these guys moving up, please. You know, it wouldn't hurt just to have these guys moving up slowly anyway, ready to charge in. Nope. They've just decided to... Are they abandoning the gates? They might be abandoning the gates. Yeah, okay, 80% damage, fine. Let's just get these guys walking up nice and slow, ready to move in if need be. Archers, do the same, please. Oh, no, they've changed their minds. They're coming back. They're coming back. Right, hang on. Back off. We've not done quite enough damage yet. Come on, lads. They're not sure whether they want to be there or not. Uh, okay, maybe do walk in. Come on, Blister. Nope, they don't want to be there. That's fine. That's a okay. Everyone just back, please. Let's not take any damage for no reason. Come on, Blister. Nail your shots, please. 94. Yeah, it's now one away. Okay, this is the time to send in these guys. Yeah, beautiful. Now, time to figure out what the English response is going to be. Are they now going to immediately ride everything? towards this area because it looks like they oh they've already got some stuff coming up oh this isn't really what i wanted to see they've already got loads of stuff coming up right i'm just going to basically try and get in the gates because honestly what more can i do well okay what we've got here is town militia town militia and an archer band those guys are retreating nothing else moving or the other things that are moving are moving slowly right we can do this especially if you can catch those guys before they get up on the walls please it's time for us to just send in reinforcements, including where are the strong guys who didn't really do much in the last fight? You know what, guys? Just get in there. Just get in there, please. Norse swordsmen should be able to cut through town militia very, very quickly and easily, but they're going to have this place held up long enough for the archers to get into position or not. No, 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 no. Those archers can't shoot because they're technically engaged in a melee right now. Works for me. Guys, get in there. There's another town militia coming. We need to basically... If we can, we need to secure this area up to the beginning of this street before the reinforcements from the plaza get over here. So I'm just going to send in all these guys right now. The problem is we can't get a surround on them. There's no way to get the surround. So... Unless these guys break, and as we've discussed before, units in Medieval 2 are really good at not breaking. I don't think we're going to be able to pull it off, unless those guys are really slow. Are you guys walking or running? Because we're on the clock right now. They're walking. They're spear militia. I mean, if we have to, we can just literally crunch the entire army down here. 
it will be unfortunate, but we can do it. Because these guys are eager. Because they're going to lose strength very, very slowly indeed. So Archer Militia still taking a fair few knocks from being involved in a fight. Including, are those my guys? No, those are town militia that are trying to flee up onto the walls. Okay, fine. Whatever. Um, Reinforcements the reinforcements are basically here. We have failed to take the town. Okay. Focused all of the strength over here. Focus all the strength here. We need to basically just knock these guys back. Actually, you know what? One of you, if you can, get through. Get through these guys. Just push straight through them. Hold these guys in place. Can you do that? Um, probably not, to be honest. They probably can't push straight through a town militia. They're already wavering. Come on. Break, you bastards. They just break now. We can pull this off. Shaken. No, they're not wavering. But these guys aren't pushing forwards. They're just... Are they ready for the charge? Nope, they're doing the charge. Fine. This is going to be a very long, slow slugging match, unfortunately. So I may as well just commit the rest of the infantry pretty much now. Nah. Actually, no. These are spearmen. So don't bother committing these. Keep one unit back here. One more unit of dismounted Huskulls won't hurt. At this point, yeah. The fact that these guys are breaking is good. I might see if I can just actually sneak my cavalry up the side here. I'm going to see if I can just sneak my cavalry through my groups here, get them up here, and then get some charges into the side, because I'll do some really, really good damage if I can pull it off. But at this point, yeah, it's just a slow, slow grinding fight. You might be able to actually get out of here. If I can just pull these guys over to the... Yeah, here we go. This is what you need to do. If you can, just look for units that are kind of at the side, pull them out, and then just move them around. Move them around, move them around, move them around, move them around. Get on the back of you. Now, technically, these guys are more surrounded than they used to be. Because these guys are now in a much more beneficial situation. And everyone's wavering. And... Okay. We might have pulled it off there. Just pulled it off. Yep. These guys are now... Come on, break. Break before the flipping reinforcements show up, you bastards. In come my own knights. Just to kind of further reinforce. No. Bloody hell. Units do, do a good job. No. No, it's good. It's good. Now, what are you going to do, Bill Militia? What do you plan to do next? We've got ourselves... Oh, dismounted Tuskars have actually gone up onto the walls. They were trying to take out the... And it's done. Good. Good, good, good. Now, hang on. Where did my flipping cavalry go? Because... Actually, there's Bill Militia there. Irritatingly, there's Bill Militia there. Right. Because they're now going to stop my own cavalry from pursuing, which is a shame. But... If you can, take out the Bill Militia. Like, unsupported, they're not going to do that hot. Fine. Okay. Let's get my Norse archers up on the wall, which is where they should be already. We've taken the walls. We've managed to make the breach point. We've managed to lose. Actually, you know what? I think we'd lost 8% over in the battle, way in the corner over there. We've only lost 11% now. Like, sure, that was slow, and the tower did some work, but this is just a superior army. There's not much these guys can do to it. And the Billmen are already looking like they're wavering, because, yeah, they're unsupported, they're massively outnumbered, and defensively, oh, yeah, just look at it, like... They will do some damage to me, but they will go down damn fast themselves. But there are, however, some dismounted feudal knights in there. Yeah, I'd forgotten those guys were there. Fine, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Maybe what we do is, in fact, we've pulled back. Pull back, with the exception of these guys who need to get into the right position. And simply say, we just want the nice, meaty Huskars right on the front line, please. You guys, right on the front line. Uh, actually, not one. One right here. You, charge forward. Hold your position, please. A couple of other guys behind you. Support as best you can. But basically, we want... There we go, that's better. You guys get over there. Because basically, I don't want to be taking the fight down the street right now. In a moment, as soon as my archers actually get through the flipping scrum, they'll be able to... Okay, everyone just get get out of the street, please. Okay, feudal knights, everyone, everyone just... Get out of the street and give the Norse archers some room to get into the city. There we go. Lovely. Now, what's coming in here? As I suspected, the dismounted feudal knights are now leading the charge. Dismounted feudal knights are not going to be able to do... Well, they are going to be able to do a fair amount to dismounted huskars, but dismounted huskars will also do a fair amount to them. It's going to be a fair fight, all things considered. And you guys are now drawing up over here. We've got more of these guys around the back, just in case. And now my archers have actually got enough room to get into the city. So, lovely. Now we're going to have archers coming up very, very soon indeed. You guys, uh, hurry up. Get in here. Get inside. 
yeah, these guys are eager. They'll hold the line nicely. Archers are now slowly but surely getting up onto the walls. Okay, last few archers get up to position here. Make sure, by the way, you guys don't have fire at will on. Don't want that. Guys, stop. And now these two guys are together going to shoot down at our... Oh, not the Bill Militia. Uh, shoot at the... Where are you? Where, hang on, where's the... Bill Militia dismounted. There's the dismounted. Right. Now, guys, go for these guys. Now, if I'm right, because they've got the elevated position, they should be able to shoot down at these guys without actually hitting our own guys. So, in come the arrows. Lovely. And that's going to start doing some lovely stuff there. So, my guy's now at 89. These guys at... Hang on. Let's just get over to these guys right here. These guys now at 112. But now I've got, yeah, archers firing in. Like crazy, 109, oh yeah, fine. So this is going to really even the stakes. Ah, but the General's bodyguard has shown up. But bear in mind, it's only the survivors from the last battle. So some of them have lost their kind of first hit point already. There's only like 14 of them left. This is not a big problem at all. Plus, now we've got arch support here. We'll be all right. You guys maybe go for the... Go for the... Do we want to go for those guys? Could just go for those guys. Let's go for Bill Militia at the back. Because if they break, that'll be a good little morale penalty for the other lads. You guys are eager, but you're tired, so you're fine for the time being. In comes a whole bunch of firepower. Dismount of Funeral Knights almost dropping below 100. Probably it wouldn't be a bad idea to send in one unit of reinforcements. And the camera gets stuck on a big ledge. Dismount of Tusk Girls, 110. Yeah, you know what? Send them in. You guys have done a good job, but you're tired at this point, so these guys who are just winded can probably help relieve you a little bit there as well. The General's Bodyguard down to 10 already. Where is the guy himself? Oh, he's way at the back. Way at the flipping back right now. And my Norse Archers are doing some lovely, lovely work there. And look at that Arrow Storm. That's just flipping lovely. And something's broken. It is indeed the Bill Militia. Fine. The Bill Militia has decided it doesn't want to be here anymore. That's marvellous. And with it, they've basically caused loads of other stuff to break as well. Which means now these guys are going to be vastly, vastly more, uh, yeah, outnumbered. So in which case, focus all your fire on the 84 lads. Or, sorry, 81, 80 lads. Lovely. It's going down nice and fast now. Good arrow support here. And the king is right to the front too. He's not a king, but I'm going to call him a king anyway. Yeah, fun. So we're up to 16%, so fine. This scrappy match here has cost another 5% of our men, but admittedly 80% of them are dead, and now the arrows are just flying in from all sides. This is going beautifully all of a sudden. They're at 63, and we are at, yeah, the really tied units are 98. Uh, admittedly, these guys, these poor guys are at 20. I'm going to let these guys pull back. I've decided these guys have done their job. They can now be relieved. Actually, they've broken. Guys, you could have finished the battle with honor, damn it. Let the new guys come in. Let them come in. There's literally only one guy left in General's bodyguard, and it's the general himself. And the town militia... <laughs> the town militia rejoins the fight and then gave up. We've killed the leader inside the dismounted feudal knights. They'll probably break momentarily as well. Now we can just basically shoot them down. No, 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 no. Don't run ahead. Take out the king. Take out the king, who's actually the named character here. And anyone else, yeah, just shoot those guys down. This is lovely. Now, at this point, you guys can probably stop, but fire at will. Just basically fire at anyone you want to. But potentially not this guy, because we're about to kill him anyway. Down he goes. Beautiful. So, enemy general dead as well. At this point, yeah, pretty much anyone that decides they want to come over in this direction, we can just nail them with arrows straight away. Very, very nice indeed. Lovely. So, what's actually left on the plaza? Because they're one decent unit of... It's not much. It's not much at all. You know what? I think at this point, with both of their generals dead at this point, good old Humphrey the Tailor, let it always be said that no man enjoyed clothes more than Humphrey the Tailor. Yeah, I think we're safe to pretty much just head on to the plaza at this point. There's a spear militia times 50. There's, yeah, there's technically a town militia times 90. It wouldn't be bad to shoot them down with my Norse archers, but I think we've pretty much done the job, and now my heavy infantry can just go in and deal with this. But you know what? We're in London. Let's do this properly, damn it. So basically, uh, yeah, I'm coming in from the north, so we need to head in here through Walthamstow. Then we need to pass by into Woods Green round here, Finsbury Park. Then we'll just head down that direction. Then we'll just pass, this is presumably King's Cross and Pancras here. And then pretty much we'll just take the plaza in the middle of Oxford Street. Oh, and there's St Paul's Cathedral. Lovely. 
Right, time to send in my meanest, nastiest, and freshest troops to finish this all off, because yeah, I've been keeping some guys back, so we've got some dismounted Tuscars here that are warmed up. We've got these guys who are fresh, that's all fine as well. And we've got... you actually are looking good as well. You can just head in. In fact, I think I just told you to head in. Keep heading in, please. Thank you. There are still technically a handful of dismounted feudal knights alive, but at this point, they don't want to do this anymore, and I can't blame them. Right, now, before we go in and get stuck into a stupid slugging match that doesn't actually help anyone, let's just get everyone nice and spread out, and let's also bring my cavalry up for some good charges into the bag. That'll speed this whole thing up. Because, yeah, you don't want to just basically have a great big death ball and squished into the front of their great big death ball, because that's stupid. Instead, we just want one unit pinning this death ball and all the others getting around the sides and in the back, because that's much more effective. Right. Norse swordsman heading over here towards this arch militia that isn't interested in actually fighting. Then you guys just come and stand over here. Just slowly come and stand over here, see what wants to actually fight. Because if literally all of them are going to kind of squidge together, quite frankly, that works for me. So yeah, you know what? Get in here. You just get in there while everyone else is just drawing up the side here. And then we'll just get around the side of them. Everyone just keep running, keep running, keep running. And as for my feudal knights, you guys get over there, start getting ready for a big charge. So those guys are now pretty well pinned. Now we just basically want to have you moving over here, you moving over here, you moving over here, and just into the side of them to make sure they don't really do anything else major. We will momentarily have them surrounded. The battle is very much That's fine. And now into you, and then into you. Lovely. So now we've got heavy infantry around them on all sides. Now I just draw up my guys over here. That should hopefully be enough of a run-up to get the lances down. It's not much of a run-up, but it should hopefully just do the job. And now these guys are surrounded. They will start going down very, very fast indeed. And now just a big charge right into, like, you know, the one remaining flank I've left open just for that. This is lovely. This is just beautiful right here. So, everyone ready? Stop. Everyone just, like, turn around, get your lance into position. You've come along too, even though you're very tired, didn't really want you to, but whatever. Right, everyone ready for a good charge? Right, good charge. Everyone charge in. Can you get Lancers down? Come on, Lancers down, and... Yep, Lancers down! And in they go, and send a whole bunch of people flying and dying. Beautiful. Get them straight back out of there. Now we basically just want to do that over and over again. While the heavy infantry do good work there, these guys, their job is to basically just fall back and repeatedly do the charge into the flank. But at this point, honestly, we've pretty much got them surrounded and there's almost nothing left. It's the final few survivors. I don't think we even need a second charge at this point. So basically, what I've got to say is, you stupid London bastards, you shouldn't have attacked- They attacked me, right? Yes, they started this war. This is one war I didn't start. This one's not my fault. And they're going to bloody pay for it too. Now, who's going to be the last brave bastard? There's one Bill Militia there. There's still a couple of dismounted guys there. Nope, they're down. There's still one dismounted guy. He goes down. I think that might be the... Were you the last one? I think you were the last one. No, it was this guy here. It was a dismounted feudal knight. Except it wasn't because there's still... Wait. Why are you bringing up the... Where did that come from? There's... Guys, there's a catapult. Does anyone know where that came from? Because I don't... Where were they hiding that? This is England's last stand. They've brought up a bloody catapult. Right. You know what, guys? Just just murder them, please. Uh, also, apparently there's something way over here. There's... Oh! There's just more catapults. Just... Apparently the catapult core was the final kind of line of defense I didn't realize was there. You know what? They're not on the plaza yet, so just go and, like, take care of it, please. Just stop them getting on the plaza. Break these guys. They're down to 26 and wavering, so just kill all these guys. Yeah, basically, if we just kill these guys, and then we just get those guys over there to break and stop them getting to the plaza, we'll win. But, um, yeah, apparently, as it turns out, England's final secret weapon was, um, it was catapults. That I didn't even know were flipping there. Alright, fine. I mean, you know what? England is a faction known for long range. So I guess it makes sense that they bring out the longest, longest range. as like the final line of defense. That's fine. Right, this catapult down to five, three. Going down very nice and quickly. They'll be dead momentarily. One lives in hope. But actually, I'm about to win by timeout anyway. They're down, I believe. So in which case, all that's left is you. You've broken everyone else. You know what? We've as good as one anyway. That's fine.
This is a clear victory that goes to only men of great virtue and valor. You know what? I'll take that. Thank you very much, Narrator Man, by the way. Uh, yeah, I'll take that. 339 men to go into a city. I probably could have done that a little bit more cleanly, but given I only had literally one blister, like, if I'd really wanted to take my time, I could have actually moved the blister around to a different gate and opened a second gate as well. I could totally have opened two, maybe even three. Then I could have, like, got away without the big scrunch, but I think it worked fine the way it was. Men captured? Um, oh yeah, of course, because the reinforcing army. Um, can't remember whether you're a goodie or a baddie. Yeah, you know what? We'll just ransom them. Surely you and the ransom's been rejected. Not my fault. I tried to release you, damn it. I flipping tried. So they all go down. And London falls to the Viking Raiders. And I get 17,000 florins. Seven. I've got 30,000 florins in the kitty right now. Oh, I'm pleased. I'm very pleased, in fact. Yes. Right. Good, good, good. Now, what have you got here that I'm retraining? You've got, you've got an armourer too. Very nice. We'll get one up to heavy mail. And yeah. By the way, uh, London is a really valuable settlement. Like, I know it's only a thousand right now, but I think it kind of it goes up a bit after you've uh, after you've done a little bit of work. Right now, uh, I'm struggling to trade slightly because yeah, I don't have any of my land to trade. But oh, this place, this is good. So, I think hopefully we have now taught England a lesson about messing with me. But there's a man who wasn't here to see this. A true great Viking hero who was chopped down by this bastard, actually, in his prime. And he had a dream. He had a dream because he was Sven of Milton Keynes, from Milton Keynes. And he had a dream that one day, everyone would acknowledge that Milton Keynes was the greatest city in the UK. For you, Sven, we're doing it. And now Milton Keynes is the biggest, most important city in the south of England. No one's even heard of this bloody London thing. What are you bloody talking about? Now, let's just do a quick bit of merging to get my troops up to as strong as possible. Yep, this is all looking fine. Then we can just basically, yeah, take the ones with the full strength and give them the better quality armor, and life will be good. There we are, that all works. Now, better quality armor for you, and for you, and for you. Lovely, because I'm guessing we can't really... We could train some bloody spear militia, but I think we're fine for the time being. Beautiful. Now, we can give you... You know what? You can have a brothel, because apparently you guys have never had a brothel. Apparently Milton Keynes is a very puritanical city. Fine. Uh, right, so. Brothel in production, so I can actually train spies. Spies will actually be useful. Yes. You want to move up north further, next turn. Further, That's absolutely fine. Okay, the problem we've got now is if I want to take that fortress off them on the continent, and I totally 100% do, I now need to leave Milton Keynes properly garrisoned because the English have a few armies dotted around up here and they've got Nottingham where if it feels under threat it could start training a large number of troops very quickly plus there's another castle over here actually it's a castle you never made that a fortress all right fine blimey uh York's not to be worried about to be honest that has now become the capital of the English so that's absolutely fine <laughs> But yeah, I imagine actually, probably the Pope next turn is going to say that's enough of that. Because I've just taken a really major city off them, and they have been reconciled now. So that's fine. Now, all of this lovely money, all this beautiful, beautiful money I've just been given. Yeah, you know what? Peasant's twerp, you can have yourself a shipwright. And our house, what do you want? You want a, you want a great market, do you? Do you deserve a great market? Do you need a great market? Oh, go on, have a great market. I've been saying you can't have a great market for bloody ages, so go on, have a great market. Oh, you need a warehouse. Okay, you should totally have a warehouse, blimey. Also, I think you possibly just need some more troops. Oh, I can't really trade anything good. Fine, I'll give you one more town militia, just because you need some extra troops there. Fine, you can have a warehouse over in Hamburg. A couple of people pointing out I've possibly got too many castles in this part of the world. Like, the thing about Stettin is it doesn't really have any decent trade resources, to be honest. So it kind of may as well be a castle, just for the time being. Because, like, these settlements are kind of squeezed between uh, the Imperials and the Polish, who are clearly natural enemies of us. And also, uh, there's Hungary here, and I don't 100% trust Hungary yet, because they clearly hate us. And generally, when people hate you, they will declare war on you sooner or later. So... Uh, I'm going to keep Stettin as a castle for now. Once we've taken out either the Imperials or the Polish, then we'll probably make Stettin a city, just for the sake of putting the tax rate up. Magdeburg I might just keep as a castle, just it's nice to have one. Fortress at Magdeburg. You know what, it wouldn't hurt to have a fortress in this part of the world. Sure, have a fortress. Now, Breslau, do you need anything in particular? Honestly, you're probably fine, but I'll give you a council chambers, because everyone gets what they want this turn. 
Citadel at Thorn. Does Thorn... Is there any reason for Thorn to be a Citadel or is that just a waste of money? We might come back to Thorn. There's probably a bunch of cities up here I haven't given anything to for bloody ages. Yeah, you apparently need warehouses as well. Blimey, actually, hang on. Weren't your mines really valuable? No, your mines are terrible. It's the mines over at Stockholm that are the good ones. Uh, so you get yourself a warehouse. Everyone who ever needs a warehouse, just ask for it. You always get that. Uh, you can have yourself... Ah, this is it. Yes. Mining 600 up to mining 1,050. Yeah, that's way more important. Poor Helsinki has just been in the Empire doing nothing for bloody ever. And sadly, still doesn't actually really need anything, to be honest. So, <laughs> hope everyone in Helsinki is having a lovely time, because we're just completely ignoring them. Riga gets a council chamber, because that's good for happiness. Vikingrad doesn't really need anything. And I've kind of spent all the money, to be honest. Actually, some of the money needs to go to Lasagna II, training up some new troops. Because we know for a fact that, yes, indeed, now a Russian force is heading this way. I only respect strength. Interesting. Something you lack. Okay, it's got quite a few units in it, but the banner's not very full. It's probably damaged and they can't afford to repair. Moscow, do you need anything new over there? No, you're probably okay for the time being. Uh, should I send a spy in that direction? Uh, no, I think it'll be fine. We'll figure it out when it... Actually, you know what? We need to know what it is ahead of time. Let's just... Let's make sure. Let's be safe. Let's just get a new spy in production over there. That's fine. Siege at Sarkel can just carry on indefinitely. Kiev can have some... I could have a brothel in theory. Oh, Kiev's making... Kiev's making nice money already. Yeah, that's starting to make some good money. The mines, however, aren't worth very much. Don't worry about them. Let's give those guys a brothel. Just so I can train spies if I need to spy in this area. Probably what I actually do need from you as well is you just step outside yes. for a second. Go over here and shove down a watchtower just so I can yes. see the road it's in this area a bit more clearly. Next turn I'll send him over here and build some more watchtowers because I'm a bit concerned I don't have visibility of these roads when a Polish force could be invading right now and I wouldn't flipping know. But I've got enough strength here to hold out against it so it should be fine. Ah yes, and I do need to get Sorry. my guy around here just to see quiet. what's going on with this part of the world because it feels like they are... Feels like they're heading south, doesn't it? Moving into position. Yeah, it feels like actually they've changed their minds yeah. now they're heading south. Now, if they do head south, they have to make a choice. They either turn to the right and continue just knackering the Turks, good, or they head over to the left, at which point they're coming for us. That would be bad. But because no one's ever actually taken or done anything with Edessa, there's no roads here, which will slow them down, which is excellently good news. Ah, and Antioch's done with its Merchants' War. Fine. You guys can have paved roads next, because paved roads are excellent. Admittedly, paved roads will just basically let these guys know where I am and they'll come and kill me. But you know what? Antioch is making an awful, awful lot of money every single turn right now. Like, it's totally 100% worth it. It will make back its investment so fast. And on top of that, more Norse archers. Norse archers are going to be great units. Put them on the walls in every single city where the Mongols come up to. The Mongols will struggle to break the walls. Like, we'll be firing down on them when they come up onto the walls. It'll be a strong force to fight them. Norse archers are going to be a really, really damn good unit to deal with the Mongol infantry when it tries to take my cities. Ah, but I've forgotten down here in Marseille. Sorry, Riga just got something cancelled because poor old Marseille does desperately need a town hall because Marseille is miserable right now. Marseille needs, you know, something to cheer it up a little bit. So Marseille's just going to get a town hall in two turns. Toulouse is fine for the time being, though, though we can indeed retrain some stuff there. Yep, there we are. That's a good use of money, especially Genoa. Genoa can soon get its own set of dockyards and that's going to be magnificent. Now, the French here. Do I want to take those guys on? Like, what's my force hit? No, my force isn't that good. This is an excellent defensive force. It's a terrible offensive force. If the French want to throw away their strength against me on a bridge, that's fine. But I'm not in a position to go and attack them in the open field. Give it a couple of turns when Toulouse starts being able to produce troops in earnest and all of its troops start coming online. Then we'll be in a good position to put together a brand new army that can actually do some really, really nice work. Though I'm also concerned... By the number of French assassins clearly Second. floating around. But actually, is he a... Yeah, he I is a terrible one. Right, take up. out the assassins, please. Lovely, you'll take him down, no problem. Get down over here. Start just knackering every French assassin you see, please. I need you to come down here. Take target. out this guy next. Thank you very much indeed. Target. We've got our own spy yes. here. Let's just move him up to here, just so we can see Bordeaux. Sire. Lovely. All right, that's good enough for now, I think. Time to see what happens next, including the English and French responses to what's just happened this turn. My 
priest. Ah, yes, of course. Priest moves down over there. You go into Gaza. That's fine. Yet another flipping French assassin. So we just need to knacker all of them one by one. Ah. Although someone just died, potentially to an assassin. <laughs> Not who that was that just died. Maybe someone was just assassinated by someone else. Oh, actually... Because the French assassin was there, possibly the French assassin just took out, like, an Imperial assassin, and I just couldn't see that assassin. That's entirely possible. Even more bloody assassins. And, ah, hang on. France, are you planning a big... Oh, I think they are. I think the French have decided they haven't lost enough strength so far. So they're coming in for another big-ass bridge battle. Beautiful. The last kind of, you know, major historically significant battle where the French lost a huge amount of strength on a bridge against this guy wasn't a good enough warning. They've decided to do it again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I would say we will begin next time with that. The French are coming again. They just have not learned their lesson. So time to see what this bridge looks like and whether we can pull off the same overwhelming victory a second time. And after that, well... We wiped these guys out very effectively. Can't help but notice, Dijon looks a little bit on the vulnerable side. And if Dijon looks on the vulnerable side, we've actually just reunited the empire. We'll actually have a single unified empire. If you look down here, because yeah, we'll have all of this over here, linked via land, via Riga, to all of this. And then with Dijon, it will be, it'll be the stupidest looking empire imaginable, but it will be there. <laughs> So, potentially, we can reunify the Empire, with the exception of this bit down here. But I vaguely have a plan that, like, by the end of this game, because we're going to take Sarkel at some point, if we could just take a few territories, just, like, two territories, Odessa and uh, Yerevan there, then, oh, well, and, and this one as well, then potentially, with just three territories, we can actually have a unified Empire, where if you want to, you can ride a horse from one side of our Empire to the other. There's very little reason to. It would be a very boring trip through, like, you know, huge amounts of empty tundra and empty desert and also dangerous land between our enemies but if you wanted to you flipping could so i kind of want to do that by the end but in the meantime we've got a new french assault to deal with and depending on what they do as a result and how much we win that by yeah opportunities might become available for further progress against the french but in the meantime i hope you this has been many a true nerd and this has been medieval 2 total war thank you very much and goodbye I've created a small problem in my road system, which is uh, it's literally impossible for anyone to ever go back into town. And this building shall be where we produce our zebras. And this much taller building next door is naturally where we produce the giraffes. Does anyone remember how the road system went? I think it was something like this.